The Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 versus the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. The head-to-head -head review is here. As you can see, the big difference is going to be this 16-inch display that comes on the Book 3 versus the 15-inch display on the Book 2. Now, the weight and thickness is very, very similar between these two models. Where we're gonna see the biggest difference is actually in the height or the width or however you wanna say this. You add about an extra inch onto the chassis there for the larger panel. Now the trackpad is also going to be a very large difference between these two laptops. As you can see, we get quite a big upgrade in the trackpad, very similar as far as the click is concerned, very similar sound and feel, nice and tactile. However, the size is definitely much bigger. Now another difference between these two laptops is the position of the trackpad. As you can see, they're definitely both offset a little bit to the left, but there's a quite a bit more space on the Book 3 compared to the Book 2. It's much more noticeable that it's off put to the left. I personally was not fond of this. As a right-handed user, I felt myself a little cramped. Like I was always kind of having to like pull my arm this way to have access to the correct click on the trackpad. I ended up right clicking on accident a number of times while using the Book 3, whether it be you know just web browsing or inside of design applications or video editing, whatever it might be, it annoyed me at how much it was off put to the left. On the 15 inch model for the Book 2, I did not notice it as much during the review. But the keyboards and the trackpads are very similar. Here's a quick audio sample of me using both keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what they sound like. Now, in regards to the webcam, here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see what both of them look and sound like. This is the webcam on this Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, and of course, a little sample of the microphone for you. This, this, this is the webcam on the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360, and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And last but not least for our samples, here's a quick audio sample of the speaker so you can hear what it sounds like in you. Now in regards to the screens, both laptops had great brightness, color accuracy, and color gamut range. However, on the Book 3, we did see quite a bit of upgrade for that Delta E with a 0.63. I was really happy to see them improving the accuracy at which the colors are displayed on your screen. So this is great for graphic designers, digital artists, and photographers. Now in regards to the port changes from the Book 2 to the Book 3, you can see we've actually added an HDMI port on the left side panel in addition to the two USB type C's. And then on the right side panel, we have now a USB type A instead of a USB type C. So we've lost a USB type C going from Book 2 to Book 3. However, we've gained a USB type A and an HDMI. And of course, they both have the micro SD card reader and headphone jacks. Now, one thing that made me really happy going from the book two to the book three was how much flex on the chassis has been minimized going from the book two to the book three. So there's the book two and here's the book three. Like I almost can't even flex the book three, which is a big improvement. That was one of my concerns when reviewing the book two is it's so thin, so on the go friendly, which is awesome. However, it was really flexy when I went to bend it and twist it. Now you're not necessarily gonna be like walking around trying to bit, twist and bend your laptop. However, when it's in your backpack or maybe somebody set some books on top of it, the flexiness of it really concerned me that you might end up breaking or injuring the screen or the keyboard or maybe some of the internal parts. They definitely improve that in the book three. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the book two and the book three, I'll put links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, one thing that we changed a little bit going from the book two to the book three is the lack of a smaller version 
for the Book 3 Pro 360. You can only get the 360 in a 16 inch model in regards to the US. Now they do have a Book 3 Pro, which is a 14 inch model. Now that won't have the screen which completely flips over like so, but it will be a 14 inch model. And so if you're looking for something a little bit smaller, more on the go friendly, you're gonna forfeit a touch screen and the 360 display that rotates around. For me personally, that neither of those would be a big deal. I personally don't ever use a pen for my work. I use it to test and show you guys how it works, but I don't personally use that on my day-to-day -day workflow. So a 14 inch model would save me money and it would provide me with a more on the go friendly laptop if I'm looking for something smaller to fit, you know, maybe in a smaller backpack or something. And for a little more discussion, if you're th considering book two or book three for After Effects, I would not recommend it. You can only get these laptops in 16 gigs of RAM. That was really frustrating to me because After Effects, if that's something you're considering using, really likes RAM. And with the lack of a dedicated GPU in the book three Pro 360, it just doesn't make for a compelling argument to choose either of these laptops. I would go for the Ultra, if you're going to be an After Effects user. Now, speaking of performance, something that I've often overlooked until recently was the Wi-Fi connection that I'm sending from my router to my computer. That actually was only about 240 megabytes per second, when in fact, I wanted to see the 1,000 megabytes per second that my internet provider promised me and that I paid for. So it wasn't until Motorola sent over their Q14 system that I started to see well above 600 megabytes per second for my internet speeds. And that to me was a big improvement. So make sure you're considering that when uh, considering a laptop because a lot of the apps we use today are web-based apps. And so you actually might be getting a bottleneck for your internet speeds just as much as you could be getting a bottleneck from your computer components. So if you're curious about the Q14 system, you can check out the links in the description below this video, or you can go check out the full video that I filmed in the review of this product. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the benchmarks looking at the Book 2 versus the Book 3. And we saw a bit of an upgrade going from Intel 12th gen to 13th gen. Nothing astronomical, nothing that blew me away, but since we are getting a newer model, it was nice to see a bump in performance. As you can see in Geekbench single core, we saw just under a 200 point increase in performance. And for multi-core, that's where we saw a bit more of a bump at about 1,500 points going from the Book 2 to the Book 3. 12th gen to 13th gen in Intel. Now looking at Cinebench single core, you can see that we had a 1615 for the book two and a 1782 for the book three. Now going for multi-core, once again, that's where we saw the larger increase in performance by about 1500 points. So if you're looking to do a lot of multitasking, the book three would be advantageous to you. If you're really just more of a single app at a time type of user, then the book two would be enough performance as it didn't make a big difference between book two and book three. Now in regards to the performance in Photoshop, 700 is a really good starting point for a Photoshop benchmark that has fantastic performance inside of Photoshop. As you can see here, both the book two and the book three are well into the 800s. You have an 803 from the book two and an 898 in the book three. If you're somebody who uses a lot of layers and you do a lot of complex Photoshop work, then the book three would be advantageous to you as it does have increased performance over the book two. Now, this is something that really interests me going from the book two to the book three. Now, they both had great playback for 4K Okay. Um, but they really struggled in regards to 6K B-RAW playback at full quality. However, if you switch both of them to half quality, you can see that on the book three, we only saw 128 drop frames for 6K B-RAW footage. Fantastic. Now it's a nine minute clip. It has 16,177 frames total in the project. So you won't even notice those drop frames. If you look at the book two, you see about 239 drop frames for 4K. And then at half quality for B-RAW, we saw about 304. So the book two is a good video editing laptop, but I would have to say that the book three really steps it up and just adds that little bit of extra power to give you the comfort you need in your video editing software like Premiere Pro. Now, in regards to export times, this is where I was most impressed with the Book 3. You can see a three minute and 47 second export time beating out the Book 2 by almost a full minute. So definitely a good increase in performance there. But what amazed me the most is going into 6K B-RAW, something that I was not overly impressed by for the i7-1260P, going into 13th gen with the i7-1360P, you can see we had a 28 minute export time. Now, right there above that export time, you see the Apple MacBook Pro M2, but let me tell you something about that. 
That is not doing a 6K to 6K export. That Apple MacBook Pro M2, it would take 58 or more minutes to export 6K to 6K. That what you're seeing there is actually 6K to 4K because it took so long. I just was like, it's not even worth showing because nobody is gonna wanna wait an hour for a nine minute export. Um, and well, nine minute clip exported. Um, so what you're seeing there is actually a, a little bit of misconstruing in the data, but that's why I explained it here. So you're actually getting better performance out of a Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 than you are out of a MacBook Pro M2. That's what's up. So really cool to see the performance increases from Intel really showing off and flexing its muscles. Now, in a nutshell, which one is right for you? Honestly, the performance increases from book two to book three were not anything substantial enough for me to say, hey, it's it's black and white here, like totally go for the book three. For me, what you're getting with the book three is the larger trackpad, about 15% increase in performance, the larger screen, which I personally love the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. I think it's just fantastic. You're getting a brighter, more color accurate screen as well. So the question is, is it worth that extra price um, compared to the book two? Now, another thing that really stands out to me, probably one of the most important things for me personally was the flex. This is the book two and it was just so flexy. It just really freaked me out. And the book three, they fixed that and it's not as flexible, more of a durable laptop. And so for those reasons, I would lean towards the book three. Book two is still a great laptop. It's got so many pros. It's got great performance. One of the best i7-1260p performing laptops that money can buy. However, everything I didn't like about the book two, we're seeing corrected in the book three. Let me know what you think. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase, and I'll see you guys here in the next video.